Hi everyone, Cole Pepper here, trying to replace that Missing Unit 7 video that doesn't work. So, here we go. As you know from reading the lecture notes, this unit is all about kinds of repetition. And as in music, various forms of repetition are very common in poetry. Um, we've already worked a little bit uh, in the previous unit uh, with sonnets and blank verse and such. So, um, you know about a couple of kinds of repetitions already. One is the repetition of a certain metrical pattern, uh, meet beats per line, and arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllables, and that sort of thing. Um, so you kind of know about those already. Um, as we get into this unit, we're going to look at some other kinds of repetition. We're going to look at a uh, repetition that um, that doesn't use rhyming words, but just uses uh, a certain set of words that are used repeatedly in the poem, um, as in a sestina. Uh, we're also going to talk about some forms that uh, use repeated lines rather than repeated words. So, um, one of the repetition devices that we may play around with a little bit with is called anaphora. And anaphora is a device that in general, instead of happening at the end of a line, like rhyme, um, it happens at the beginning of the line and it involves uh, rep exact repetition uh, in sort of uh, a series of lines. Um, of a particular word or phrase, um, and um, it, it's used a lot in um, scriptural texts from various religions where that you sort of get, um, I don't know, I guess by having that same phrase uh, repeated over and over, it, it sort of works as a mnemonic advice, uh, device to help you uh, remember the line, and, and also to give it emphasis and have it set in your head. So that's that's one kind of repetition. Um, we're also going to look at uh, some other kinds, too. So in the, uh, I think it's the more repetition chapter of uh, the uh, Poets' Companion book, um, it deals with three closed forms. Remember closed poetic forms. That's my cat, sweetie. Um, remember that closed poetic forms are ones that follow a certain set of rules. And with sonnets, we looked at a form that has a specific number of lines, 14, um, that generally has a uh, prevailing pattern of iambic pentameter, meaning five beats per line, and roughly unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable, although uh, lots of possible variations are, are possible within that model. Um, and also with the sonnet, we have a rhyme scheme. We have uh, repeated sounds like goat boat or um, balloon baboon that, um, that have a repeated sound that uh, is at their end or sometimes within them. So we've got that going on. Uh, in the more repetition chapter, we're going to look at pantoums and villanelles, both of which use a repeated line. Um, multiple repeated lines, actually. Um, and we're going to talk about the sestina, which doesn't use rhymes, but uses a different way of, of repeating words. So, um, the pantoum uh, is a... a Malaysian form, I think, and uh, the way it works is that you have four line stanzas uh, or quatrains, and so uh, this is easier to see than to tell, but basically, uh, so you have four lines in your first stanza, and the second and fourth lines of that stanza will become the first and third of that stanza, and it continues interlocking like that uh, until you end 
thought with a line that you started with. So it's a, it's a fairly complex form, but the idea is that you have repeated lines that form an interlocking pattern as you go through the poem. It can have any number of stanzas, um, and it can rhyme, but it doesn't have to. Obviously, the repeated line thing gets really complicated uh, if it rhymes, so most of them don't. Um, they can follow any meter. There's not a set meter that they have to follow. The main thing is that interlocking uh, pattern. Uh, the Villanelle is a French-Italian form um, that also uses a very complicated uh, line repetition. Um, and basically, it, ha it has 19 lines total. Um, so there are... Uh, five three-line stanzas, followed by uh, one four-line stanza. Um, it follows a uh, consistent uh, rhyme scheme all the way through, so the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, so goat, baboon, uh, moat. Um, and that same pattern uh, repeats throughout. Obviously, when you get to the last stanza, which has four lines instead of three, you got to get an extra one in there, but we'll worry about that later. Um, so, um, usually it follows that rhyme scheme. Um, usually it is in iambic pentameter or something very similar. Uh, so we've got two elements that are continuing from the sonnet form, okay? Um, but the complicated thing is the repetition of lines. So, lines one and three from the first stanza reappear at various points during the poem. Um, and um, you can, the best way is just to look at example to see exactly where they repeat. Um, but you have that kind of thing going on. Um, the difficulty with the Villanelle is making the repetition of lines and the rhyme work together without you ending up with just like silly things to force it to fit, right? Um, for me, at least, the Villanelle is, is like one of the hardest forms. Um, anyway, but that's our basic pattern. Um, the Sestina is a longer poem. Um, it doesn't use rhyme, but it still uses a repetition of words. So basically, you have 39 lines. So there are six stanzas of six lines, that's 36, right, plus a three-line ending or envoy. And the way it works is that you take the six words that end the first six lines, and those six words, in a different order, also have to end um, the lines of the other five six-line stanzas, and all of those six words have to appear in the three-line ending, although obviously they can't all be at the ends of the lines because there are more words than lines. But anyway, so, um, so that's our pattern. Um, if you want to write a really traditional, um, Sestina, that's what I'm talking about, right? Uh, a really traditional sestina, there is a specific pattern that that repetition follows, like the order in, uh, that dictates the order in which the words repeat. Um, in a more informal kind of sestina, as long as you get the six words at the ends of the six lines, uh, you can play with the order a little bit. It doesn't really matter. But that's that's our basic. So those are our two, the pentum and the villanelle are our are two basic line repeating uh, things, and the sestina is a is a word repeating pattern rather than a line repeating pattern. Um, it really helps for me, at least, uh, in writing a sestina if some of those words that end your lines are multiple use words, like um, if there are words that can be uh, nouns in some contexts and adjectives in others are 
nouns in some cases and verbs in some cases, those kinds of things. So that they're a little more versatile, that makes it easier to keep the pattern uh, going. Anyway, so those are our basic more repetition chapter ones. Um, we also have the uh, repetition rhythm and blues chapter, which deals with some more forms. Um, uh, obviously, in music, a lot we have repeating uh, metrical patterns, right? We have a um, we have a time signature. Uh, we often use rhymes and different kinds of repetition and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm not going to go into detailed musical explanations. Um, some of you are musicians, and you will you will know this stuff. Um, but but the point is that you have a, a sort of standard pattern of repetition. You can make some variations from it, but you've got to have that. Uh, you can't just do like random crazy stuff. You've got to at least reference that underlying pattern. And sometimes, if it's music with lyrics, uh, the lyrics do similar kinds of things. So if you're um, if you know a, a traditional blues song, for example works in um, sort of an eight bar unit musically, but lyrically it works, uh, if it's a really traditional one, in um, three line units in which the first two lines basically repeat themselves. Um, so in other words, line one and line two are very similar. Uh, they can be a slight variation, but they're often very similar. And then Line three is usually something that rhymes with him. So, um, I hate I gotta write another poem now. How I hate I gotta write another poem now. Cause the good Lord knows I don't know how. Okay, so I can't sing either. But you get the idea. Basic blues rhythm. Um, so that's a kind of, of repetition also. Um, some more modern forms of music like rap, for example, obviously is a, a sort of standard repetitive beat. Uh, but also there's often like a, a catchphrase or uh, a line that gets, uh, that gets used repeatedly and so on. Um, let's see what I'm leaving out. Um, some other forms, um... We've got the the paradel as an option for your exercise eight. The paradel is a form that the poet Billy Collins uh, claims to be one of the oldest and most complicated forms of French poetry or something like that. It may be, but I think he just made it up, actually. Uh, but anyway, there is an example of uh, his poem, Paradel for Susan, in which he includes a footnote which explains exactly how the whole thing works. Um, it's uh, it's similar both to uh, the blues lyric and to the um, pantoum in the sense that you um, that you have repeated lines in the same stanza, um, and similar to uh, the blues song in that it has two essentially identical lines. Um, so basically, the way the paradox works is that you have you have four six line stances, okay. Line one and two are exactly the same; they just repeat each other. Um, lines three and four are exactly the same as each other. Then lines five and six have to use all the words from lines one through four, although not necessarily in the same order. Okay, so this goes on for three stanzas. And in the last stanza, the last stanza has to use all the words from all the previous stanzas, but no other words. And again, they can be arranged in any order. So, uh, sometimes the paradox comes out really silly, uh, because of that need to use exactly the same words again. Um, sometimes it kind of seems to not 
mean much of anything, and it's just kind of fun wordplay. Sometimes, if you're really, really good at it, uh, it comes out, you know, saying something a little more profound and um, complex. Um, but anyway, the point is that you, you're repeating lines exactly, but you're also using an elaborate word repetition thing, uh, independent of the lines and the ending. Okay, um, uh, let's see, what else are you doing? Um, the Rondo Redouble, uh, um, is a, also a complex form. Uh, it uses, um, often rhyme and pentameter and repeated lines and a device in the poem, uh, in which the poem ends with a half line that's derived from the first line. Um, and with the, as with the villanelle, there's a certain pattern according to which the lines repeat themselves. And I could try to tell you, but it, I'd just be throwing numbers at you and it wouldn't make any sense. Um, it's much better just to look at one. Um, and there's an excellent one by uh, Wendy Cope in your anthology that is just like, you know, it's the perfect model. So um, I can recommend that one. So that's what we're going to be doing um, in seven. Uh, we've got, um, let's see if there's anything else I'm leaving out. I don't think so. Um, it is just, um, it's just an opportunity to play around with some more complex uh, patterns of repetition. So we can, we can look at repetitions in rhythm. We can look at repetitions in words and phrases. We can look at uh, repetition of sounds, as with rhyme. Uh, and if I didn't say already, we can look uh, at lines that repeat all together. And a couple of the really complex forms use like most of those devices uh, simultaneously. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's you in seven. Have fun.